This video tutorial is designed to guide you through some key aspects of wideband tympanometry that are important for undertaking a differential diagnosis. The main audience for this tutorial is expected to be clinicians and ENT doctors working with adult patients. However, the themes discussed may be applicable for pediatric settings as well, as many of these pathologies can occur in younger patients. It is very important to remember to interpret wideband tympanometry results as part of a test battery. Case history, audiometric data, otoscopic findings and other data will help you to understand the wideband tympanometry results as accurately as possible. Furthermore, within a wideband tympanometry measurement, each piece of data must be considered alongside the other results provided. It is not recommended to make interpretations based on single components such as the absorbance graph or the resonance frequency value. The first data graph you will encounter is the 3D tympanogram. Experienced testers will be used to visualizing this display and noting whether there are any gross abnormalities. The color range provides an instant overview regarding absorbances. Low absorbances are expected in the lower frequencies with higher absorbances typical for the mid to high frequencies. If the 3D tympanogram displays excessive yellow and orange in the higher frequencies, this is an indication of an abnormality. Likewise, if the lower frequencies are predominantly green, blue or purple, this is not the expected result. Under the 3D tympanogram tab, you will also find a range of data displayed at the bottom of the screen. Here, the view can be changed to, to display the 2D tympanogram or absorbance graph, and the sliders allow these graphs to be viewed at the different frequencies and pressure values. The ear canal volume, resonance frequency, and peak pressure values are also displayed. The middle ear and pathologies affecting the middle ear can be considered in terms of mass and stiffness. An increase in mass will limit high frequency transmission because heavier objects vibrate at lower frequencies. An increase in stiffness will limit low frequency transmission because less elastic or stiffer objects vibrate at higher frequencies. The effect of this can be seen in the resonance frequency value. A mass-dominated pathology, such as middle ear effusion, will show a decrease in resonance value, or no recording at all. Similarly, ossicular discontinuity pathologies will show a decrease in the resonance frequency. A stiffness-dominated pathology, such as otosclerosis, will show the resonance frequency shift to a higher frequency. Ossicular chain fixation is likely to show an increase in resonance frequency due to the increased stiffness whereas a flaccid tympanic membrane would typically show a decrease in resonance frequency because of the greater elasticity. Under the tympanograms tab, it is possible to customize the displayed graphs. A suggested default display is the 226 Hertz tympanogram, the wideband average tympanogram, and the resonance frequency. For each patient, these can be changed live depending on the needs for the best clinical interpretation. It is possible to display the tympanogram for any selected frequency, which in combination with the peak difference measurement allows for further analysis of the results. The next tab displays the absorbances. The red or blue curve, depending on which ear is selected, displays the absorbance graph at peak pressure. It is possible to display the absorbance graph as recorded at ambient pressure, which is shown as a gray line. The absorbance graph displays how much energy is absorbed by the middle ear. Normative values are provided for all age groups. Different absorbance patterns can be indicative of various pathologies. Please refer to the video tutorial Know Your Pathologies for more detail. In summary, the starting point for differential diagnosis will be using the average tympanogram, the absorbance graph and the resonance frequency.